to Mother 2. In the last part, Paula completely fucked Master Belch's shit up all by herself. With yeah, that the, was so impressive. With the power of prayer. Oh, and now we're going I, in- I couldn't believe that. That was incredible. And now we're going into the hot springs, which are pink <gasps> for some reason. Pink hot spring. Oh, speaking of pink, I just drank some coconut water, and the coconut water was actually pink, so it looked really similar to that. It was really interesting. So, maybe the hot springs are made out of pink coconut water. Maybe. Now, now, I get that there are sprite lo Oh, hey, the hot springs are five nests. Um, I get that the, um... Hot springs, um, or like there's just, uh, sprite limitations, but they were wearing their clothes in the hot springs. Like, why would you do that? Like, yeah, that you seems don't. Uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, also, do you really want to get them all wet? Oh, here comes right. a monologue! Oh, let's do this. You've traveled very far from home. Oh, yeah, this monologue happens while they drink some coffee. <laughs> Do you remember how long, how your long and winding journey began with someone pounding at your door? It was Porky, the worst person in your neighborhood, Aww. who knocked on the door that fateful night. I mean, that neighborhood's got like two houses, so I mean, it's not much of a competition. It's so true. <laughs> on your way, you have walked, thought, and fought. Yet through all this, you have never lost your courage. You have grown steadily stronger, though you have experienced the pain and the battle many times. You know, I think I think this background graphic just came from like the same concept as several other background or er, graphics from battles. You are no longer alone in your adventure. Paula, who is steadfast, kind, and even pretty, is always by your side. Jeff is with you as well. Though he is timid, he came from a distant land to help you. Ness, as you're certain as you certainly know by now, you are not a regular young man. You have an awesome destiny to fulfill. It is your destiny. That I, that's one of the first times. <laughs> one of them. Oh no, there's more. That it happens a lot in this game. <laughs> the journey from this point will be long, and it will be more difficult than anything you have undergone to this point. Yet I know you will be all right. When good battles evil, which side do you believe wins? Do you have faith that good is triumphant? I have. I believe that whoever's the strongest wins. Well, I mean, this game doesn't really have any of those morally gray positions, so I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> One thing you must never lose is courage. If you believe in the goal you are striving for, you will be courageous. There are many difficult times ahead of you, but you must keep your sense of humor, work through the tough situations, and enjoy yourself. And it. And through all that, you must deal with the complete stuttering that the recording program went through at this instant. Yeah, that was interesting. When you have finished this cup of coffee, your adventure will begin again. Next, you must pass through a vast desert and proceed to the big city of Foresight. You see, that's one of the reasons why I prefer using the Dazzle. Um, the recording software on a computer can cause potential um, slowdown within the emulator program. But with the Dazzle, you're just, you're just flat out recording what's shown on the TV, so it doesn't cause any slowdown. Yeah, totally. Ness, Paula, Jeff, I wish you luck. Yeah, any slowdown is slowdown that came from the game that was already in the game's programming. And this game has a lot of slowdown regardless, so usually when there's just a lot of shit on the screen like tons of people like well, remember when we were in that room that was full of happy happiest cultists oh my gosh that was so many people holy crap yeah I mean, was amazing. the game really slowed down there anyway before we move on i mean i'm going down first appreciate appreciate i saw happy, happy zoom all home zoom I love how they say zoom. That's the cutest thing. It's super random too. Like, why would you say zoom? I mean, they rarely even move, it's let alone move fast. Verbal ticks. Zoom, ding, boing. boing. I said this before, and one of them says Dakota. Dakota! I can't wait. I, I don't. That one. I I think that's later in the game, actually. You come here to wait three minutes, no? Here <laughs> is present. I hand you cup of life noodles. I get you Master Saturn coin. I no hand you. My stag beetle. Oh, tease you. I have no something. Oh. 
I think it was kind of interesting how they just stuck that monologue right in the middle of the game. It's like, well, we can't somehow, you know, fit all this exposition into the regular gameplay. Let's just slap it in a monologue randomly in the middle of the game. Um, yeah, I mean, it was during that cup of coffee, though, and it was right after a, an arc finished up, so that kind of... Its timing could be worse. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. No, it wasn't bad at all. I just thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. Like, we're gonna hammer it home that Ness has his destiny. But who has a, a different destiny? We have the destiny to record over this game because we're, we're, our show's fucking shitty. Nah. Oh. <laughs> No scared. Oh, I don't know why that. I don't know Going why that's back. there. That that's just a dead end. I just love the soundtrack. I can't get over it. I think I'll think about complex things from now. Oh no! Oh no! I have a cat on my lap. Oh no! Hi, kitty. Oh no! He's on the computer. Oh, he just. He just. It's pausing the game. Oh no. Now the game's playing again. I think I can hear the cat purring. Oh my gosh. That, yep. That's the cat. Hello, cat. Oh no. Wait, how'd you even get in here? The door's closed. Stop licking me. Oh my gosh. Why are you licking me? Does my sunscreen taste good? Oh no. Your tongue is so rough. Oh my gosh. That's... It's like sandpaper. Cat's, to cat's tongues are all like sandpaper. Didn't you know this? Oh my gosh, okay, so I got this new sunscreen and I put a little bit on my arm to test it out and now the cat's licking my arm. What's do you that? hear the cat purring? Yes, I do. <laughs> what are you doing, kitty? Ladies oh and gosh. gentlemen, this cat, it's not Carrie's the guest, or like a, she's house cat. sitting. What's the cat's why name? You... Violet. Violet, okay, why are you climbing all over me now? Oh my gosh, okay, okay. The cat's on my face. Oh my gosh. Okay. Hi. Hi. Hi, Violet. You want to put her outside? Ah, Violet, no. Okay, I'll just try and keep her off my lap. Now she's off my lap. Now she's licking my arm again. Okay. That's the funniest thing. Oh, are you laying down? I'm on the I'm on the bed. Oh, okay. That explains Why are it. you licking my arm? Why are you eating sunscreen, kitty? Wait, did the video get paused when that was happening? Slightly. Where are we right now? Um, 739, 740, 41, 42. Okay. Yeah, I'm right there. So it's no big deal. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. You sure you don't want to put that cat outside? I mean... Eh, she'll be okay. I'll just keep my arm where she can't crawl onto the computer again. I can still hear that purring, though. Why, kitty? Why are you licking me? That cat really likes you. Yes, oh my gosh, she's the funniest cat ever. When she mouths, she sounds like she's crying. It's like, Arr! it's really weird. It's almost like a pterodactyl crying. I don't think she... you're, I don't think that cat could stand out for mine who won't shut up when he wants no. something. <laughs> oh my gosh, kitty, why? What are you doing, child? Oh my gosh, why are you rubbing your face on my hand? What is with this cat? That Cats do that! <laughs> Carrie, have you not had a cat before? I've never had a cat. I've only had a fish. And we know about the fish. We know about the goldfish. <sighs> Why, cat? There's another cat. Okay, this one's Violet. And the other cat is named Meaty. Um, so that's, which is short for Meathead. Yes, the cat's name is Meathead. And it is super shy, so I hardly ever see it. Mad and Duck! This one won't leave me alone. That duck over there is a rare appearance in Saturn Valley. It's a dumb duck. It's right in the corner. Well, it's called the Mad Duck. Anyway, now we have a cave to go into. Oh, oh, hey, hey, Escargo Express. Are you going to give... Wait, so can you, like, call the Escargo Express, or does it just come randomly? You can call them. I'm giving them things I don't need, but that I can't get rid of because they are key items. I see. That is a loud cat. Yeah, it really is. Do you want me to put it somewhere else? Um, I would appreciate... I think the... I mean, I don't mind too much, but I think the audience would appreciate that a little bit. 
if the audience wants to hear that little kitty kitty, can you say hi to that kitty kitty? Say hi to that kitty kitty. Okay. Uh, hi, kitty You're kitty. The... You're going off the bed, Violet. Alright, there she goes. She's off the bed. Alright. I mean, she might jump back on, but... <laughs> If yeah, it... she does, I'll just I'll put her outside the room. Um, my cat. Um, I have to like sometimes he sits on the recliner chair that I like to sit in. Um, yeah. and so I kind of have to push him out, and then like when I do that, he just like can sit down there. He just jumps onto the other one. That's so funny. <laughs> it sure loves its chairs. Yeah. Okay, now now Violet. Okay, I took like a stack. There's so many pillows on this bed when I first came into the house. Um, to stay here, and I piled all the pillows in a pile in the corner, and Violet just kind of made her own little fort, and so now she just sits in the pillows and gets the sun from the window, and oh yeah, she's a happy cat, that's for sure. Happy she's kitty. She's a happy kitty, she's gonna be staying there for a while. Okay. Um, my cat's favorite spot is probably the guest bed in, in my house. Like, there's a guest bedroom, and then That's cool. there's a bed there, and it's also the room where my mom uses the computer, so... It's where the family computer is. I don't think is. that room. Oh, okay. Do you ever use the family computer? I don't know why you would. If I need to print or scan something, I do. Ah, uh, yes. That makes sense. Hole, milky well, what dis? Ding... Hmm, who are we fighting here? The tough walking sprout. Oh man. And the strutting evil mushroom. <laughs> wow, how intimidating. As opposed to the rambling mushroom and what was the other one that was called a walking regular walking sprout? Yeah, these are just the harder versions of them. They're so tough. Wow, I admire them. But could you beat them if you played this game? I don't know, maybe. I mean, yeah, if you know when to level and whatnot, like, just, if you can work your leveling well enough, then you should be able to. I'm sure I could figure it out. What's that sound? I like that sound. That was the sound that came from PK, or sorry, PSI Magnet. Oh. It basically takes, um... Psychic points. Like, you can steal psychic points from somebody when you use it. What? It's always funny when they try to use it on Jeff, which is more often than you'd think, because Jeff doesn't have any psychic points. It happened right when I was saying it! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Level up! Yay! Anyway, you might recognize this song from uh, the Mounty Toy Entrance Cave from Mother 1. I don't think I was paying as much attention to the music in the first one as I am to this one. That's a fair <laughs> point. But I mean, I'm just saying that it was there, and it existed, and that was where the blue Starman was. Blue Starman? I love Starman. Yeah. Starman Jr. Because it's so junior. It's so junior! <laughs> Fun fact, Paula's dead, but so is Jeffel's. No, it's a, we have die, my friend. We have revival items, though, and both of them healed completely, so we're fine. Good. The Ranboob. That's... I don't know why it's called name. that. Yeah, I'm kind of confused, too. <laughs> I don't know why it's called that. I don't know exactly what it's supposed to be other than... So, and I believe the only answer to that is the Ranboob. I wonder if... I wonder, well, do you know what it's called in the original Japanese? I could look and it up. if that has anything to relate with it, maybe? I could look it up. I'm kind of curious. Um, let's see. Well, first I'm looking at the wiki page. Um... Uh, hmm, 
doesn't say anything on the wiki of its uh, Japanese name, so I could look up the page where I got all that localization info from. Oh, you can't- you don't have to if you don't want to. No! I need to find this out! You, we need to know this! <laughs> no, right. I totally understand. I kind of feel uh, the same way. That's various areas in the game. Here we are. Names. Did you just say memes? Oh, I said, we said names. names. Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong page. Enemies Here is what I need. Memes. It's also called the Ranboob in Japan. Fuck. Like, oh, does that even mean anything? Like, I'm sorry, I cannot get over this. <laughs> that's just the weirdest thing. I'm also looking at, um, some of these other things. Um, so there's this one enemy called, um, so earlier there was the Violent Roach. Do you remember that? And it was like right in front of Saturn Valley? Yes, yes. Um, in Japan it's just called It. It. Also, Everdread is called Mr. Tonchiki in Japan. Huh. Um... Maybe if I knew Japanese, I would understand the significance, if there is even one, but oh well. Yeah. So if I think of like localizations when it comes to names and stuff, like I'm, I, I often think of Pokemon and I'm like, okay, so how did a lot of those names get translated? Like, you know, who, who decides what names they get when they translate it? Not sure, um, but I mean- how they do that? It's quite interesting in my opinion. They do a pretty, uh... They do a pretty good job on that. Oh, hey, here's the boss fight. The trillion year sprout. That's intimidating. It looks like that barf pile dude, except for a, a, a dirt version. Dirt pile. Yes. I mean, sprouts are healthy, but I don't think a trillion-year-old one would be healthy to eat. But it'll probably would be quite moldy. Look at its cartoony eyes, though. It's so funny. It's like, why are your eyes growing from the, like, the stem? That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Where are your eyelids, my friend? Your eyes are going to dry out. Do you need eye drops? Should I go get him eye drops? Maybe. You dump some contact solution on him. <laughs> That probably kill him. Wait, he's trillions of years old. He can probably survive anything. Yep. Oh, here's something. Um, in Japan, the Starman Junior is called the Son of Starman. I mean, I that guess sounds... that's it's kind of the same thing, but it's not as Junior. It's not nearly <laughs> as Junior. Son of Starman. That's like. It sounds almost like regal or or like a like a a royal title. Son of Starman! Ba ba bum 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 ba bum! <laughs> oh wait, I ended up using Zelda music in that little thing right there without meaning to. <laughs> that little jingle I just did is from Zelda. Oh, that's great. Starman Jr. So we're about to get the third melody, and um. There it is. Yeah, this is Milky Well. I'm so glad Gabe isn't here right now. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, you know what he'd do. Make the jokes. Do I need to do them instead? No, I'm kidding, I won't. Good. We don't need that. We don't need Gabe. <laughs> we don't need Gabe. <laughs> well, see, it's called Milky Well. The first thing I thought was Milky Way. Yeah, I can honest. see where you'd think that, but we know how Gabe thinks is the thing. Because we know where I don't leave my mind. In the, in the gutter like some people do. You see, the thing is, I've just kind of come to expect it at this point. I'm like, oh, right, Gabe isn't here, thank God. <laughs> Next time on Smash Team Games, will there also be a cat? Who knows? Well, the other one's locked out, and it's pretty skittish, so unless it can somehow phase itself through the door, like, I don't know, separate all of its particles and... Yeah. You know, that actually that. reminds me of something. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't remember what this was from, but I remember, like, um, I remember reading, I think I was reading something saying, um, that, um, if you were, like, if you try to, 
like, if I asked if you could run through a wall, you'd say, no, that'd be ridiculous. However, if, like, the particles in the air lined up just right, it would be possible. However, the chances of it happening are so low that it would far exceed your lifetime before it actually happened. Yes. And, I, like, I remember reading that somewhere. Like, I don't remember where it was, though, but it's just... I mean, it sounds kind of like one of Koizumi's expo exposition majigs, but I'm not sure if it was from Haruhi. When I think of, like, physics and stuff, um, you know how your, your atoms and it's basically everything that you're made of is actually made of more empty space than it is actual particle and actual matter, and so... You never know what can happen in the world of quantum physics. <laughs> yep. The world that's necessary in order to play Super Mario 64 properly. That's necessary. <laughs> oh shit, next time on Smash Team Games. Wait, it's still recording? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>